For all your t-shirt needs, check out Tee Public's Killer Selection. Follow the link in the description. Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about the 40th anniversary 4K UHD Blu ray release for John Carpenter's Halloween. Now, this video is going to be entirely dedicated to this 4K Blu ray release. I did a standalone review of Halloween back in the day when I did my October Halloween a thon series of Halloween reviews. I'm also currently working on a video in which I'm going to rank the Halloween movies. I'm going to have that out sometime this month before Halloween, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, for that. But I just want to talk about uh, this release. It's the 40th anniversary of John Carpenter's Immortal Classic, and Lionsgate has given us a 4K UHD transfer of the movie. Now, I've taken some notes. I'm going to dig into those notes here momentarily, but just off the top of my head, some of the things that um, I noticed about this 4K UHD Blu ray release. Overall, I thought it was pretty good. Now, what I loved about Blu-ray when that first <laughs> hit the streets is the same thing that I love about uh, 4K UHD. And that is how it can make a it, it can make watching a movie that you've seen a million times before feel like you're watching it for the first time because you're noticing little things <laughs> in the movie that you didn't notice before now in the case of halloween i've seen the film on television i've seen the film on uh, vhs on dvd on blu-ray and on various different editions uh, of each i've seen halloween a million times and watching it in 4k uhd blu-ray there were definitely a few times i got that feeling like I'm noticing little things here and there in the frame that I didn't notice before during one of the million other times I've seen the film. And that is really cool. Just little textures, little things in the background, like, oh, I didn't realize that the wall was that color or that the handrail was that texture. Or, you know, there, there were some scenes where the picture was so crisp and so clean and so vivid that you could like see the, you could see the actor's pores <laughs> on their face. I'm not kidding, and I don't want to point out who the actress was, but there was a scene where we got kind of a close-up of her face. I remember thinking, like, wow, she's got some big pores. Um, but, yeah, I got that feeling. Like, wow, I'm watching this movie for the first time. There were some instances uh, that were just so, again, crisp and clean and vivid and, and smooth. I think that was the thing that really caught me uh, when I was wa when I first popped it in and uh, we watched uh, the the opening sequence in which we have the tracking POV shot of young Michael walking around the house into the house, gets the knife, walks upstairs, takes care of his sister. It was just so smooth and so clean it, it looked like it was shot on a digital camera not on you know 35 millimeter film 40 years ago it looked great you know the the the, the colors were vivid the the night was vivid the the blue hues that john carpenter used they were so vivid um yeah it, it was great watching this movie in 4k uhd now keep in mind I watched this on my Xbox One S, and even though the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X are 4K Blu-ray capable, I've heard that they are still not the best quality, you know, 4K Blu-ray players. So I did have some issues with this release that I have not had on other 4K UHD Blu-rays that I've played on my Xbox One S. So it could be just that it's the Xbox One S, I don't know. If you watched this release on your Xbox One S and you had some of the same issues that I had, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you watched it on a standalone 4K Blu-ray player and you had some of the same issues I had, please let me know down in the comments section below. But watching this on my Xbox One S definitely motivated me to want to go out and buy a standalone 4K Blu-ray player. So keep in mind, as I'm talking about some of the issues that I had with this release, I was watching it on my Xbox 
uh, one. So I did take some notes. I sit down, I popped the movie in, I pressed play on my <laughs> Friday the 13th part five, Roy Xbox one controller. And, um, I just started taking notes as I went through watching the movies, things that, that stuck out to me, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll grab my notes here. I've never got a legal pad, um, <laughs> very far away from me. And the first thing I noticed right off the bat was just the overall darker presentation of the film. The movie appeared really dark to me, darker than any other edition of the movie that I recall watching to the point where I even got into my television's picture settings and ramped up the, the color and the sharpen the sharpness. Yes. <laughs> to kind of make it a little brighter and, and a little bit more vivid because it just seemed like it was an overall darker presentation as a whole. Um, then I noticed during the the daytime sequences when we are first introduced to Lori Strode and she's walking down the streets of Haddonfield, it looked very gray to me. <clears throat> now, I actually kind of dug that because I thought that the gray added to the overall fall aesthetic. Uh, it made the movie look and feel more middle America fall to me. Now, of course the movie was not shot in the fall. It was shot in California where there are no seasons. So I thought that the gray actually added to the film a little bit, added to the aesthetic of the film a little bit. Now I could definitely hear some people saying, you know, that they did not like the gray, <laughs> uh, that they thought it looked ugly or murky or whatever. I kind of dug the gray, but it was definitely gray. I also noticed some light flickering, um, lights. I like, I'm not sure how to, um, explain it during some darker sequences in the film. There was just like this pulsing light, uh, kind of down toward the bottom of my screen. I first noticed it, um, when Michael encounters, um, Lindsay's dog outside of her house. Uh, then I noticed it when Michael is carrying, uh, Annie's body from the car around to the front of the house and takes her inside the house. Then toward the end of the film, during some of the darker sequences, I noticed it quite a few times. Um, just some, some, like I said, some lights, flickering toward the bottom of the screen uh, or toward the bottom of the image, I should say. Um, it wasn't anything that really I found. It was slightly annoying, particularly toward the end, but it wasn't anything that really <clears throat> deterred from uh, the overall experience of watching the film. Although like it, it was a little annoying. Um, I do have to say, um, there was something cool it, during the sequence where Annie is on the phone talking to Paul and Michael is behind her kind of in the door. She passes by the door and you can see Michael there and she, she walks over here and you can't see Michael and she turns around and Michael's gone. Well, I noticed that when she turns around, you can actually see Michael walking away. You can see like the back of him and like the back of his leg as he's walking away in his shadow. So really she should have been able to turn around when she turned around, she should have seen him walking away, but I'd never noticed that before in any of the other times I'd watched Halloween that when she turns around, you can see the back of him walking off frame. I, 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 yeah, that was kind of interesting. That was one of those moments where I was like, I'm watching this movie. I felt like I was watching the movie for the first time. Um, the night sequences, they looked very sharp. The shadows appeared deep. Uh, the blues and reds were particularly sharp. The sequence in which Jamie Lee Curtis and, uh, or, or Lori and Annie are driving around in Annie's car and they're smoking the joint and they're listening to blue oyster cult. The interior of that car is super duper red. It's just, it couldn't be redder. That red color just popped right off my screen. Um, and I loved the depth of the darkness, uh, toward the end of the film, there was the overall darkness. And then there were, there was like the shadows and there was a depth there that I thought was, was really cool. I noticed textures. I noticed rich textures or uh, on different surfaces like walls and handrails and even pores on some of the characters' faces. <laughs> like I said before, I won't name um, this actor, but there was kind of a close-up of her face that I was like, mm, she's got some big pores. But that's what 4K UHD 
does. I mean, there were, again, there were shots in this film. There were sequences in this film. They looked so smooth. They looked, they looked so crisp and so clean and so vivid. It was almost like they were shot on an HD camera, a, a good high quality HD camera and not on 35 millimeter film 40 years ago. Um, so again, I did have some, some issues with, uh, with the blu-ray as far as the light flickering here and there uh maybe even the the gray was maybe a little more pronounced for me because i was watching it on my xbox one s i don't know maybe the overall darker look of the movie uh throughout had something to do with my xbox one s i don't know i've not read any other reviews or watched any other videos of people talking about this release so if you had those issues and you watched it on an xbox uh please let me know if you had those issues and you watched it on a standalone blu-ray player a 4k blu-ray player uh, please let me know down in the comments section below as far as the extras on this re release are concerned all of the extras on this release are basically the exact same extras that were on the 35th anniversary um, Blu-ray release for Halloween. As a matter of fact, the discs also sport the same artwork as the uh, 35th anniversary Blu-ray release for Halloween. But there's a couple of nice extras on here. Um, the, the two biggest extras on here, we have The Night She Came Home. It's 59 minutes and 44 seconds in length. It is the 2013 documentary uh, Chronicle Jamie Lee Curtis's very first appearance at a convention in which she attended Horror Hound Indianapolis back in 2012. It's a very nice documentary about her uh, lone convention appearance, at least up to this point, and um, very nice documentary. Uh, we get On Location 25 Years Later, which is actually from 2003. It includes interviews with producer Deborah Hill and PJ Souls. Uh, they discuss the locations in South Pasadena. Uh, California, uh, where they shot Halloween and they revisit those locations today or today as in 2003. We get the TV version footage, we get trailers, we get TV spots and radio spots, and we also get the audio commentary with John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis. And I know this commentary's taken some heat from people. I know some, th there's a lot of people out there who really don't like this commentary because of Jamie Lee Curtis. They think she takes over the commentary. Um, I never really got that feeling listening to the commentary the first time with the 35th anniversary release or this time um with the the 4k release um i actually think it's a really good commentary they go in depth about a lot of things from the the, the making of the film uh jamie lee curtis talks about being you know the 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 preeminent scream queen and doing halloween 2 and and terror train and prom night and oh goodness what was the movie she did with richard franklin in australia road games she talks about those movies she talks about what it was like to be the Scream Queen. Um, so, yeah, th there's a lot of great information in this commentary. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is very, you know, uh, she's very animated. She seems very excited to be watching Halloween. John Carpenter is just, you know, he's John Carpenter. He's super cool. He's just, he's just the man. This release also comes with a slipcase, as you can see here, a sticker that says uh, Halloween 40 Years of Terror, which is nice. It is a Blu-ray and 4K UHD uh, Blu-ray release. I've got the 4K in my <laughs> Xbox One S. Here is the Blu-ray, and of course, it is the Blu-ray from the... 35th anniversary release, or at least it's got the, the artwork from the 35th anniversary release um, right there. So yeah, overall, this is a nice 40th anniversary 4K UHD release for Halloween. We get no new extras. We really, you know, we, we don't get any kind of, you know, pump and frills for this release. Um, the selling point for this release is the fact that it is Halloween in 4K UHD, and it's priced, you know, pretty reasonably. I think I got this off of Amazon for 15 bucks, and, you know, yes, it's the unteenth edition of Halloween that I now have in my collection, but it is the very first 4K UHD release of Halloween that I now have in my collection. I do recommend it if you are a hardcore Halloween fan. You got to add this to your collection. It's Halloween in, in 4K. And if you've not um, embraced 4K, maybe this movie will urge you to embrace 4K. I, I don't know. Uh, but again, let me know 
on what device did you watch the 4K UHD release of Halloween? Did you watch it on a 4K Blu-ray player? Did you watch it on an Xbox? Did you what? Let me know what you watched it on, and if you had any of the same problems that I had while watching it on my Xbox, please let me know down in the comments section below. If you picked up this release, please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, Orc145626, Bmovie Mike, Robert Sobel, Turi Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Mitch O'Dell, Farron Sutton, Craig Farrand, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Joseph Charlesworth, PB Sam 6, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Tim Williams, Stone Gasman, Zachary Barton, Mr. Bibby 86, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Cliff Hostetter, Kyle McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Lauren Dixon, and Chris Earls. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.